I'm right, going to be testing out a device for synchronizing multiple projectors. Uh, that's something I've had on my to-do list for a while to find some good options for that that are simple and affordable. So uh, thank you to Digital Press Works. They found one that uh, I think right now it's about 150 on Amazon. Um, so that's affordable and it can do up to four projectors. So I'm going to kind of test this out today. I've got three projectors and I'm going to try putting them on these three walls in this room. Uh, we've got a company, there's a company that's doing a, a summer party later this summer and we're wanting to do some kind of an immersive experience so this is going to be kind of our, our test run for that to use um, three or four projectors to try to get all the walls covered. So as I have it set up right now, this actually just has one projector hooked up and then I'll plug each one in and kind of show you how it works and if you want to if you already have the show done by somebody else then you should just have a video file that you can play that will work automatically but there's some some work up front that I still got to kind of figure out exactly how to do it um, using uh, the first one method I'm using is by using drawing a map just within Adobe After Effects itself so that I can do it live um, at the event on site so talked about this in some other videos but uh, within Adobe After Effects you can do a live mapping and in order for this to work you first need to go to your display settings in Windows and set this to extend rather than duplicate. Once that's set you can create a, a new composition and if you come up here to edit Hard to see off my phone but edit and then preferences and then it is uh, where is it video preview there it is video preview and that's going to open up this menu where you can enable this mercury transit and make sure that you have your monitors here checked um, once you do that, then on the extended desktop, you see I've got just a purple um, layer here, solid layer, and that purple layer is being projected on the extended screen. So if I wanted to now do some masks, I can do so. I should have got the tripod because I'm trying to hold this and do it at the same time. But if I wanted to draw some masks, for example, um, I could do that right inside here. Then I can draw my masks like this. We'll pretend there's an object there. And we can do our masks just real time. Cool. And I've, I've got another video that shows how to do that too. Uh, but this will be on the scope of this video. This video is how can we do this and get these other adjacent walls too. Okay. So this, this first step I just have HDMI to this main projector. Next step, I'm going to connect it to our device. Okay, we're going to connect it to, to this device. Link will be in the description, but what this device allows us to do is take one HDMI input, and we can have up to four HDMI outputs. So we're going to take the one from the laptop and have that as the input, and then have an HDMI out for each of the projectors. And you can do different kinds of configurations. You can do just one monitor, two, three, etc., um, all the way up to some of these combinations. Um, although I'm not sure how they're getting the 4x4 over there. But at any rate, the one that we're going to do is this 1x3, because I've got three projectors all lined up and just want to try to get those synchronized. Okay, so first step we'll just plug uh, the laptop HDMI into here and then grab one of these outputs, um, the middle one, and plug it into this projector. And assuming that works, then I'll plug in the other two. Okay, I got the one projector hooked up. And with just the solid, it's a little hard to tell, but this is doing just a one third of the overall image. Um, so to show that, I threw a white line right here in the middle of the composition. And that shows that white line over here on the left side. So that 
probably didn't make a lot of sense, but if I, let's go to some screen like, let's find a video we can play and make more sense. Okay, so this is a full size video, but Gus over here is getting cut off as well as Phineas on this side. So it's just the, the third. I don't know if that was even worth trying to explain, but it'll make more sense once I get the other two projectors connected up. So let's uh, connect the next ones and then we'll see how this looks. There we go. Got all three ghosts accounted for across three projectors. So just to cover how we got it there, again it was HDMI to this device on the input and then the outputs are going to these three projectors and to get the orientation the way we wanted it we just used the remote that came with it to do that one by three um, orientation so there you go now they're stretched because this is still a 1920 by 1080 composition so they're super duper stretched but now within the the mapping you can start masking things out and power pinning corner pinning uh, to be able to make it match the right perspective so i'm going to try doing that real quick and we'll see how it looks all right and then within adobe i did two lines as my mask on this simple test which you can see in the this corner and that corner there and then i used the power pin effect to pin the hitchhiking ghosts within those within that mask. So in here it looks like they're all stretched. But by the time you project it, now we've got the right perspective. And then we could add another ghost over here, another ghost over here. We could add some textures. In fact, that might be kind of fun. Maybe I'll do some textures next. All right, so I added some some textures from our, our Patreon collection. We've got a bunch of images and textures there that we can use. And you know, I'm not worrying about the precision here. Like we've got some some corners that I'd have to, to get a little closer mask. This is just to give you an idea of what's possible. Like there's another corner over there that's doesn't line up. But I could do my my masks and get everything looking right and then have something like this. And this is what it looks like in the Adobe project. Now, uh, on Digital Pressworks, they also recommend, instead of the 1920 by 1080, to upscale it to 4K. And that way, when it is stretched out like this, then you'll get a little bit better quality, higher quality. So I'll probably change my comp here and, and try that again. 